This fake emulsification in this case that we observed earlier for the um, sphincterotomies shows one of the earliest applications of the downslope sculpting technique with the lens nudged inferiorly, and most of the sculpting in the center of the lens. This technique was developed in the small pupil cases because of the limitation of the view and of the, because of the desirability of keeping the phaco tip near the center of the lens. second instrument is used always to maneuver lens material to the tip. This artist view shows the downslope sculpting technique where the lens is stabilized and the initial sculpting often made a little to the right of center because the second instrument is stabilizing. And you see now in the cross section how the sculpting is done in the upper portion of the lens down the slope of the concavity of the posterior capsule. When the instruments reach the posterior portion of the lens centrally, they can be utilized to fracture through the plate, the posterior plate of the nucleus and the epinucleus if it's firm as well. Alternatively, additional sculpting can be done in the upper portion of the lens just to debulk the lens and then additional fractures made through the thicker rim inferiorly and these sections can either be emulsified as they're broken away or left in place as the lens is rotated for additional fracturing. Larger segments, like uh, a hemisection left, can be fractured with the two instruments. Again, we see the spatula from the left nudging the nucleus inferiorly so that the sculpting can be done in the upper portion of the lens. We want to stay away from the edge of the pupil, and we want to get deep into the center of the lens early on in the technique. The goal here is to obtain a fracture through the posterior plate of the lens. If we nibble away the cortex and leave the posterior plate, that can present a real challenge as to how to get at that plate. But if we can fracture through it, while we still have adequate peripheral nuclear material, then we don't have the challenge at the end of trying to get under that plate or shaving it thin enough to emulsify. Note that we're leaving the sections in place in this particular case. And there's just a short burst of ultrasound to lollipop into the nuclear rim. And then maintaining aspiration, 
during the fracturing and not using phaco emulsification again until the material is well out into the center of the lens as right here, well away from iris and capsule. These small pupil cases certainly demonstrate the distinct advantage of the nuclear fractus techniques because we don't have to put the tip of the phaco under the iris, under the capsule, in these small openings in the capsule. There is a risk of the iris flowing unexpectedly with the lens material into the tip of the phaco port. So one should use a lower flow when the pupil is small and reduce efficiency but increase safety. This animated graphic now demonstrates the downslope technique where after just a few passes or even one pass the nucleus is nudged inferiorly to emulsify the edge of the nucleus superiorly and this very small pupil case will demonstrate how these techniques allow the fake emulsification to be accomplished in even the very small pupils because of the way the emulsification can be accomplished in the center of the lens. This small pupil would, or we would not attempt fake emulsification in this small pupil in the presence of a brunescent lens, but in a lens that is judged to fracture easily, it can be attempted once experience is obtained in these techniques. So a lot of the phaco, at least the fracturing, is done down deep under the iris. As this large segment comes to the tip, note that I'm leaving the tip of the phaco right in the center of the pupil and insisting that the lens material come to it to try to avoid touching the edge of the iris with the phaco. If I am down under the iris, it's usually in aspiration mode only, trying to engage one of the sections. This case illustrates how that the fake emulsification can be accomplished through a smaller opening in the capsule than the implantation or the size of opening required for implantation of even a five millimeter intraocular lens.